Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about the notion of sustainability. Now the notion itself is perfectly reasonable. In fact, we should be striving for sustainability as much as we possibly can. Uh, sustainability is necessary for our long-term future, uh, or at least getting as close to sustainability as we can. So what is sustainability? Well, basically it's a state of a being where things can continue as they are, unmodified, with no external inputs, indefinitely. And that's, it is something of a pipe dream. The universe does not work that way. Everything is lossy in some extent, so you always need some level of external input to keep things going. But if you can minimize the external inputs required, you can maximize the the lifetime of that sustainable that uh, thing that you want to make sustainable. In this case, the thing we want to make sustainable is human existence. Now, as things stand right now, what we're doing is not sustainable for many reasons. The environmentalists. Uh, would have us believe that the only thing that is uh, causing us any trouble and the only thing we should concentrate on doing anything about is global warming and maybe pollution. But those are really two sides of the same coin. Well, they are not entirely wrong. Uh, global warming and pollution and so on is a problem and it is a problem for sustainability. We do need to do something about the global warming, uh, the emissions and all of that stuff. The problem is what to do about it without actually making the problem worse. So a lot of what I've seen uh, as solutions to it might have a short-term result. And certainly a short-term result is useful. But the long-term result is going to lead to potentially worse emissions. Uh, now, my current thought is like what the environmentalists are uh, basically demanding is that we do things that will very likely bankrupt the economies of uh, any nation in the world that isn't already in the tank. And if we do that, yeah, we will definitely reduce emissions in the immediate short term. Problem is, if we knock everyone back to the early industrial age, we're going to increase the emissions again as a result, because people are going to have to turn to, uh, well, they're going to end up doing things that put more junk in the air than what we're already doing. And they're going to be putting things in the air that we have mostly stopped putting in the air because they were toxic. We're going to end up back in the age of acid rain and all of that junk. And we really want to avoid that kind of nonsense if we can. So we need to look for better solutions long term, even medium term. But I do agree that we have to do something. And it may be that doing something in the short term is better than nothing at all. Uh, it is, after all, pretty clear that what we're doing is not sustainable for more than one reason. And it's not just the emissions, the pollution we're generating, all of that. That's not the only reason. Because, of course, pollution damages our habitat, the earth, the, the ecosphere we have to exist within. And if we do that, we're, well, what we're doing is ultimately going to be self-limiting because at the end of it, uh, we're probably going to cause ourselves enough trouble that we'll knock our population down significantly. Whether we do that before a runaway greenhouse uh, effect gets started on the earth, who knows. But it's not clear to me that what we're doing will lead to a runaway greenhouse effect. If it does, obviously that's bad for the planet. Uh, but we're obviously not going to survive it if that happens either. Now, there's another problem, and this feeds directly into the emissions and pollution problem, and that's our continued 
increased consumption of resources on the planet. You can see that in the uh, petroleum industry, uh, that if you look at the usage curves over the years, we had a steady exponential growth for a long time. I'm not sure if that's stopped or not, uh, given the recent uh, chaos in uh, oil prices and so on. Uh, I'm not sure that what's actually going on with the demand, uh, supply and demand curve right now. But with economic trouble across the world, uh, it's definitely lower demand for a lot of things. So that could have leveled that curve off. But had we not had the economic uh, so-called downturn, then demand would have kept going apace and increasing and uh, who knows where we'd be today. We'd probably be much worse off, in fact. But it's pretty clear that we're taking way more resources out than we should be. In fact, we're using up the non-renewables at an alarming rate. Now, obviously, oil and so on had to have been created in the first place, so it must be possible to create more, but it takes a long time and a lot of energy. And we're just burning that up like there's no tomorrow. And if we keep going at the rate we're going, there may not be a tomorrow if you listen to the alarmists. And while I think while they have a point, they might be just a little too alarmist. Uh, and that's probably why people aren't giving them as much notice as maybe they deserve. Now, there's two things leading to this ever-increasing resource extraction, and it doesn't just apply to fossil fuels. It applies to arable land and uh, damage to it because we're, we're using it too intensively. Um, we're, things like iron and copper and you know, metals uh, and other minerals and so on. That stuff is getting used up really fast. So there's a couple of things that are leading to that. One is continued, rapid global population growth. That's a problem because every person has certain minimum, bare minimum, resource requirements to survive. And as you increase the number of people, you raise the bare minimum required to sustain the popula population. And then you've got the consumeristic society and the and the fact that very populous countries are rapidly coming up from pre-industrial status up into modern the modern world with the modern conveniences and we're talking billions of people coming up through this right now and that's really causing a strain on the resources on the planet and if this population growth were to continue along with the continued industrialization and modernization of other parts of the world well we're going to run out of resources a lot sooner than people expect so what's the solution there? Um, well, obviously we want to reduce overall consumption and extraction of new resources if we can. And if we do that, we should reduce the emissions indirectly as a result. So we'll reduce the pollution aspect of things. So how do we do that? Well, the first and most obvious way to do that is to reduce the population. If, if we reduce the human population by half on the planet, we probably reduce, well, we would reduce the bare minimum baseline resource requirements by half, and, and we reduce the demand on agriculture and that sort of thing substantially, and it might allow for, for arable land to last longer and to recover between uses without having to add fertilizer to it continually. It should also reduce the current and future demand for energy, 
uh, things like fossil fuels and so on. And if the population that remains stay, lives in more temperate and warmer climates, uh, but not really hot ones, you can reduce the need for things like heating fuel and so on. We also want to uh, recycle anything that we possibly can. Metals, for instance, are generally recyclable. Uh, it may not be easy, but it probably, things like aluminum, for instance, have been recycled forever because it's expensive to extract aluminum in the first place. As the supplies of iron and copper and other metals dwindle, uh, recycling that stuff is going to become much more lucrative as well. And we will, of course, work out better and better ways to do that. And that will reduce certain pollution as well. We also need to reduce the consumerism out there. And that means we need to have a seismic shift in certain mindsets, I guess, of society. The idea that more stuff is better is something we need to break ourselves of. And that'll be hard because I think it's fundamental in our nature. We also need to stop building disposable things and go back to building things that last. If we could build things that didn't have to be replaced every five years, then there'd be a lot less need for additional manufacturing and so on and additional resource extraction continually. And there's a great way we could have a significant impact on that uh, almost immediately. There's been this trend over the past 20 years of adding fancy electronics into absolutely everything. And guess what it is that fails in most things and causes them to be thrown away? Well, it's the fancy electronics. Why do you need a fancy electronic light switch? A simple mechanical switch works perfectly for turning lights on and off. You do not need a fancy mechanical switch or an or electronic switch. You don't even need a fancy mechanical one. Uh, a simple mechanical switch works just fine for turning lights on and off. So why do we need fancy electronic ones? A simple mechanical deadbolt works better than most electronic locks because it works without electricity. You just put the key in, you turn the tumbler, your lock opens and you get in. You turn the thing, you turn the knob, it throws the bolt and you're locked again. Uh, for most locking, uh, situations, a simple mechanical lock works just fine. There are cases where the fancy electronics is beneficial. For instance, in an internal combustion engine, and we'll never fully get rid of those because you need some way of transporting things around that has to be self-sufficient in areas where you don't have massive infrastructure. Uh, and you can improve the fuel efficiency of that internal combustion engine by using some electronics. And that's certainly beneficial. But you don't need a fancy infotainment system in the automobile using complicated electronics that can fail and then brick the entire car. That's bad for resource consumption because now you can't replace the part that's broken and you can't fix the part that's broken. Appliances, the same thing. Uh, having fancy computerized electronics and the control plate on a range right in front of the burners where you're going to spill stuff on it, great way to brick the entire thing and uh, you have to use up more resources to make a replacement. And since a replacement's likely going to cost more than a new thing, people buy the new thing, not the replacement part. So if we instead went back to building things to be serviceable and repairable, 
and we went away from overcomplicating everything, we could significantly improve the uh, sustainability of our, uh, at least, consumption habits. And if we could reduce the crap we collect, that would help as well. Uh, looking around uh, the area uh, where I'm filming this, there's a huge pile of crap around here that I don't really need, yet I have accumulated over the years. So, uh, you know, if we stop doing that, you know, and in this way, uh, you know, fancy electronics and computers, storage and so on might actually improve that situation quite significantly. Uh, uh, there, it, it could reduce the need for physical things quite substantially and people can still feel like they have stuff, right? Now, there is a problem if you try to reduce the consumerism, and that is it'll tank our economy globally so badly that uh, we could end up, uh, well, it'd be a big problem. Uh, and to fix that, we need to fix the assumptions built into the economics that growth is perpetually sustainable. Because we have had, on average, net growth over the past 500 years, people have come to expect that, that will continue indefinitely, which it cannot. And I think the current economic crises we're seeing now are early symptoms of that house of cards collapsing under its own weight. Uh, so we need to solve the economic problem before we can actually really solve the consumerism problem. And the consumerism problem really has to be solved before we can get to solving the waste problem. And the waste problem is pretty much exactly the same problem leading to greenhouse emissions and so on. Uh, that's not that's really simplified and there's a whole bunch of other processes that lead into emissions and so on that are not directly tied to economic activity uh, things like uh, recreational travel and so on but for the most part those aren't the biggest contributor and if we could uh, improve city layouts so that people didn't drive everywhere uh, we could make substantial improvements there. If we could improve public transportation so we get better bang for our energy buck, well, that would improve things as well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things we can do, and we should be doing all of them at the same time. The problem is we can't afford to invest in the infrastructure until we solve the economic problem. And that is a much harder problem to solve because the economists don't even understand the problem. They don't even understand that there is a problem. And there are massive moneyed vested interests that will resist any change to the economic system because such changes will necessarily eliminate the power that those interests currently hold. Uh, and this this is going to require a fundamental shift in how money and financial markets and all of that stuff operates. Uh, as a quick mention, uh, the first thing we need to do to fix all of that is to eliminate fractional reserve banking altogether. Uh, we need to make sure that every demand account, whether it's a credit or a deposit account, is fully backed 100% by liquid cash type assets at the account where the account is held. So the banks cannot issue credit if they don't have the cash to back up that credit line. Then we also need to, because you need enough money in circulation for the economy to operate, uh, we still need to increase the money supply as the total economic activity increases. And the way to do that is the governments, possibly through some sort of arm's length agency, print money as required. 
You take away the ability for fractional reserve banking to create money out of thin air, and then and you when new money is needed in the economy, you just print it and then have say the government spend it on infrastructure or or anything like that that goes directly into the productive economy. If you do that, you're going to actually eliminate a massive power base among private interests and that's going to meet a lot of resistance. I think that's why a lot of economists who are paid by these types are potentially deliberately missing what's actually going on. Now, if we, if we can do that, we can solve that, and if we can solve the uh, consumerism problem and uh, the overconsumption uh, problem, uh, then, and the population problem, I think there's a good chance that we can turn around this mess we're making of the planet. I don't think it's gone too far yet to turn it around. And I do think we have uh, longer than the environmentalist types think to get it really turned around. But I also think we need to take action immediately. And that includes things like transit and non-motor non vehicle developments in cities. That means uh, investing in infrastructure uh, that doesn't require massive energy investments, that, rec that involves getting people to, uh, getting a handle on population growth, that in, you know, it, it involves a lot of things that we, we should be doing all at once. And it's getting lost in the harping on greenhouse gases the things that we can we can do that will help it's all getting lost in that one discussion and i'm going to say as a a closing note i think things like cap and trade are are actually going down the wrong path they're not going to actually solve the problem they're just going to add yet more sources of economic confusion and uh, money changing hands and it's just it's not going to solve any any actual real problems uh, so anyway uh, sustainability requires that we have to stop the perpetual increase in economic activity, we have to stop our increase in population, and we have to stop our excessive consumerism, which is getting worse and worse over time. Uh, I guess that's probably all there is to say for now on the topic. I've gone on much longer than I actually uh, wanted to or expected to in this case, and it looks like I have to go and uh, deal with the cat over here. So. Uh, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos, and if you've watched this long, thanks for watching.